Hey, welcome back. This is Jake, and uh, today we are tackling some Talica with the Fade to Black intro solo. Uh, I am going to take you through every single lick in this guitar solo, but before we do that, there's a few really core concepts that I want to talk about that uh, involve this solo, uh, mainly the scale, the scale shapes, some arpeggio shapes that we use. So um, before we dive right into actually learning every lick, I really encourage you to stick around through these first few concepts. We're going to go through two scale shapes, two arpeggio shapes, and one rhythmic idea. Um, if you want to just skip right into learning the solo, though, you can do that, but I highly advise you spend the time to understand the theory behind uh, these leads, and that way you can apply them uh, to your own solos. And that's what I'm going to do at the end. I'm going to show you uh, these core concepts that I'm going to show you at the beginning. I'm also going to take to the end and try to make my own Kirk Hammett solo using these same kind of ideas. And I think that's a really important uh, idea for you is not just to memorize solos. That's great practice. Yes, you should memorize solos. But spend a little extra time to understand what's going on in those solos. Understand the vocabulary of what you just memorized. Uh, I think it's very beneficial, and it'll uh, shave off years of your practicing and your study if you just uh, invest some time really analyzing what you've already learned. Okay? So let's get right into it. The two things I want to talk about first uh, are two different B minor scale shapes. This solo is basically in the key of B minor, all right? Um, so uh, there's a lot of ways we could play the B minor scale. The two ways that Kirk Hammett chooses uh, are as follows. The first shape is going to go like this. I'm starting on B on the low string, which is my seventh fret. And the shape goes 7, 9, 10, 7, 9, 10, then 7 and 9. And then on the next string, I'm going to jump back a fret. I'm going to go 6, 7, 9. I'm going to jump back up a fret. I'm going to do 7, 8, 10, and 7, 9, 10. So I want you to practice that up and down, that entire scale shape. If you know all of those notes, then you pretty much know exactly where you're allowed to go for this first part of the guitar solo. Everything he plays is in that shape, all right? So once you're done practicing that up and down, I also want you to learn this way to play B minor. We're going to start on 14 on the fifth string, all right? Much higher. And I'm doing 14, 16, 17. Then I do the same thing on the next string, 14, 16, 17. On the next string, it's going to be 14, 16. On the next string, it's 14, 15, 17. And then 14, 15, 17. So practice that up and down as well and really get to know those notes. I want you to keep in mind, these are just two ways to play the exact same scale. Take a listen. This is B minor. This was B minor. So why would we go through all this effort of learning two different ways to play the B minor scale? Well, in a solo, you know, he's playing in one key, and it gets a little boring if you stay in the same register, if you stay on a bunch of low notes all day. So as a guitar soloist, as a lead guitar player, you really want to have access to higher ranges and lower ranges. Even though we're not changing keys, that's really important. This isn't a new scale. This is the same scale. It's just a different way to play it. And you can guess there's infinite ways to actually play the scale. These are two just very simple and convenient ways to do it for your fingers. Uh, there's no big stretches going on here at all. All right, so there's your two scale shapes. Now I want to move on to the two arpeggio shapes I want you to practice. Um, basically, an arpeggio is the notes of a chord played one at a time. Um, I've got a few videos on arpeggio specifically if you want to check those out. But in this case, what we're doing is we're outlining a B minor arpeggio. All right, and to do that, we're going to start our ring finger on 16 on the third string, and then I'm going to put my middle finger on 15, then I'm going to put my first finger on 14. So those three notes right in a row. Now my pinky stretches all the way out to the 19th fret. All right, like that. And then from there, I'm going to do a pull-off, and I'm going to come back down those same notes. And I want you to sweep this, all right? I want you to do all downs on these notes. Down, down, down. And then I want you to do an up here for this pull-off, and then do all ups. Up, 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 up. All right? So downs, up, pull-off, up, up. And that, that little thing right there, is what I want you to practice. That's a B minor arpeggio. And it's almost identical to what he does in the actual solo. Once you've done practicing that, try this little shape right here. This is a D major arpeggio. And he only does this very quickly, but I still want you to practice it because you're going to see it all over the place. It's going to be 14 on the third string. And then the same notes as before. But our pinky is in on 17 instead. So it goes 14, 15, 14, 17. All right, same picking. Downs, a pull off, and then ups. All right. So that's what I want you to practice all on its own. This one, B minor and D major. All right, you should also practice these starting on the upstroke. So if I start on the highest note of the arpeggio, for example, here doing all ups, up, 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 and then doing downs, and then same thing here on this one. Okay, so those are the scale concepts that I wanted you to know, and there's one rhythmic concept I want you to know here. Um, it's pretty basic, so you know, don't get too scared here if you're not really familiar with rhythm, um, but it's this little pattern of uh, two dotted eighth notes and one regular eighth note. And you can think of that as being three sixteenth notes, 
three sixteenth notes and two sixteenth notes. And if you count that, you could have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, dum, 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 dum. That pattern right there is the rhythm pattern that I want you to learn, all right? It almost sounds like a triplet. A triplet is three evenly spaced beats like this. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. But this is like a bouncy triplet. It's a fake triplet. And that's actually how I count it. I count it fake triplet, fake triplet, bump, 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 bump. Bum, 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 bum. It's not an even beat, all right? So we're going to be seeing this a few times in the song, and when I count it, I'm not going to be counting one e and a two e and. I'm just going to count fake, trip, lit, fake, trip, lit. And it's just an easier way to count that rhythmic pattern, all right? So now that we've gone through all this prerequisite stuff, it is time to dive into the actual guitar solo. So to begin, we're going to take each little phrase real slowly, and then we'll speed it up and gradually get faster at each little phrase. The first phrase I'm going to isolate is this guy. All right, so to break that down slowly, our first lick was this, one and two and three and four and one. And all I did there is I took my ring finger and I slid it up to nine on the fourth string. My first finger followed up on the third string behind it on seven. I squashed my first finger to hit the next seven. And then I came back to my ring finger where I started. And that rhythm there is and four and one. So I'll count right after the three beat, one and two and three and four and one and four and one. After that, I'm gonna start with my first finger on the second string, I'm gonna do this little hammer on, and I'll follow up with a pick stroke with my pinky on 10. All right, and four and one, two and a three, four. The next part, and a fake triplet three. All I did there was a middle finger to pinky hammer on, and I followed it up with my first finger. All right, and then back down the same notes to the pinky, to the middle finger, back to the pinky. All right, so that's and a fake triplet three. So if I put those parts together, here's what I have. And four and one and two and a three and four and a fake triplet three, four. Again, and four and one and two and a three and four and a fake triplet three, four. Now this last note, you can play it as a grace note with a really quick hammer on like that for a little bit of extra phrasing. I will say I am gonna be removing a little bit of the original phrasing from this solo. He does do a few hammer-ons and pull-offs and spots that'll take us out of the shape that I showed you at the beginning, um, but it's pretty easy to do things the original way once you understand how it fits into the shape. So just keep that in mind that this is about 1% different from the actual performance. Our next phrase after we're done with that is this guy. All right, here it is again. The timing is and a two and three and four and and a two and three and four and. And what I'm doing there is my first finger's on the first string on seven, and then I really quickly pick to my pinky on the second string. But once I get to that note, I have to be ready for this little legato move. This is all hammer-ons and pull-offs. I'm gonna start with my pinky. It's a pull-off to my middle finger, to my first finger, and then a hammer-on to my middle finger, and then a pull-off to my first finger. So there was only one pick stroke there when I got to that 10th fret. One pick stroke here. All right, so it's picking seven. Picking 10, and that's the last pick stroke. All right, until you get to the third string. So, and a two, and three, and. And a two, and three, and. And a two, and three, and. When you're done with that, four, and. That's my ring finger on the third string, and then back to my first finger on the second string. So the whole phrase, and a two, and three, and four, and. And a two, and three, and four, and. All right? After that, we've got a little fake triplet move. Very nice, uh, simple move here. We're gonna start off with a grace note on the second string. I hit the first note, or my first finger, and then I very quickly hammered on my middle finger. All right, so it's, it's a hammer on so fast you can barely even account for it. And then I come back to seven, and then I come to nine on the third string. I go back to seven on the second string, back to nine on the third string, and then back to the uh, first finger on the third string there. So here's what it sounds like. All right, and those are the fake triplets I talked about earlier. Fake triplet, fake triplet, fake triplet, fake triplet, and end it with one, two. That was on the fourth string, my index finger, and then my ring finger, all right? So here's the whole phrase here, starting with the fake triplets. All right, again. 
So, uh, if I come back from the beginning here really quick, let's go slow. I've got and four and one and two and a three and four and a fake triplet three and four and one and a two and three and four and fake triplet fake triplet one, two, three. All right. Our next phrase, we're going to take the rest of this section all on its own because it's pretty simple. It goes like this. And in this case, all you have to do is really worry about the timing. So I'm doing, I'll start with this part. It goes one, two, three, four, and one. And and one there, all I did is I slid my middle finger up to seven, and then I pulled off to six on the same string. All right. Now I just do that pull off again, but I follow it up on the second string with eight to seven. And those notes are both pick. So I've got pull off, pick, pick. That's seven, six, eight, seven. Then the last phrase here is just my middle finger on eight, sliding to 10. All right, so I'm gonna start here. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. All right, so now is the hardest lick in the entire guitar solo. This is the arpeggio sweeping thing. Uh, the rhythm is and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four, one. And that's the entire phrase that we're gonna take here. I'm starting with my middle finger on 15 on the second string. I do a down there, I do a down on my first finger on 14, I do an up with my pinky on 19, and that's my pull off, all right? So right now that's just a down, down, up, pull off. After that it's another upstroke to my middle finger, and then another upstroke to my ring finger. So that right there is a good little place to stop and practice. All right, all downs and then all ups. Down, down, up, up, up. From there, what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna put my middle finger on the first string, and that's gonna be 15, and that's gonna have to be a downstroke, because I just did an upstroke. It would be pretty awkward to do another upstroke here. So uh, downstroke on 15, and that's another pull off to 14. So if I add that pull off to what I've got, here's what I have. All right, and it's pretty hard to get there in time, but down, down, up, 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 down, pull off. And then I'm gonna do an upstroke to my middle finger and then an upstroke to my first finger. This is at kind of in the shape of that D major arpeggio I sh showed you at the beginning. I showed you this shape at the beginning, and this is essentially almost the same thing just with our middle finger there, all right? So here's what we have at this point. All right, down, down, up, 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 down, up, up. And now it's just an alternate picking passage right here, up and uh, down the scale. And what I did there is on the second string, 17, 15, 14. Then on the third string, 16 and 14. But that 14 gets a big bend with my index finger, which is hard. It's just your index finger. But since it's the third string, you're high up on the string, you should be able to get the strength with just your index finger to bend just that note. All right? So here's the whole banana. All right, check it out. All right, and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four one and two and three and four and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four one and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four one. All right, that is a tough lick. You're definitely gonna want to take that one all on its own uh, and really isolate the practice in on that. Uh, then you know maybe uh, definitely practice it slow too. If you try and you know take that at that speed right now, you're going to do yourself some damage. So take it slow, count through each note, and then um, you know gradually increase the speed. Going on, it's pretty simple. So I'll just show you this little move right here is going to be a hammer on on the third string from 14 to 16, and then it comes back to 14 on the fourth string. All right, I'm going to start right there for this move. And what that was was 14 to 16 and then 14 on to 16 on the next string, so da da bum bum. And then keep going up the scale to my index finger and then my middle finger. And then here we have a little trill. All right, that's my first finger to my middle finger and then back to my first finger. One pick stroke. Here's the trill. And then back to my ring finger on the third string, back to my first finger, back to my middle finger, back to my first finger. So 14 to 16, 14 to 16, 14 to 15. All right. Now we're going to reach up to the dots on the first string. We have 19, 17, 15. All right, and that follows up immediately. We don't have too much of a break there. Listen. All right. 
From there, it's 15, 17, 14. And then we go down the notes of that B minor arpeggio. So it's going to be 15, 17, 14, then down these notes. That's 15 and 16. Then we do 14, 15, 14 again, but we go down the notes of the D major arpeggio. All right. And then we do 14, 15, 14 again. Back to the middle finger, to the pinky, and then the middle finger, and then the first finger. Okay? So I know that's a lot. There's not a lot of breaks in this part of the solo after those 16th note parts. So we'll start at the at the very end of that uh, arpeggio section. We've got this big bend here, and then it goes one and two and a three and four and a one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one, two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one two three four now after that you know the b minor section uh the b minor scale i taught you uh at the beginning uh it started here on 14. um we're gonna just move it back to 12 and now we're gonna play the a minor scale all the way up and this is the last lick in the song we just go up the scale at the very top we do this hammer on and pull off move and then we come down to our pinky on the second string so we have this trill then down to the pinky and then you can jump the pinky up to 17 all right now you can guess it might be a little more efficient to use your ring finger there i didn't teach you to use your ring finger in the beginning but in this case if i use my ring finger then i can get the pinky to that 17 a little faster so the last phrase just goes one and two and three and four and one and two and three and trill and end right there okay Pretty cool stuff, right? So here's what we're gonna do. Let's play the entire guitar solo uh, at a slow tempo, and then we'll take the entire guitar solo again at a slightly higher tempo, and then if you can do that, you should be ready to practice with the actual song. So if you can play that, then you're definitely ready to start playing along with the song. Definitely isolate that 16th note sweeping part. It is definitely the hardest part of the entire solo. So if you can get good at that, I think the rest of the solo should follow uh, pretty easily. Now I want to show you what I did uh, using these same techniques, essentially just using those two scale shapes and using a lot of the trill move that we saw, that little, uh, this move right here where we did a little trill and then went back to the third string. I use that move a lot. I use these two shapes. I use a little bit of the arpeggio sweeping, just like we saw Kirk Hammett. And I tried to write a riff similar to what Metallica would do, but in this case, I did it in the key of A minor. So essentially, I'm just picking around an A minor chord and a G major chord and an A minor chord and using the uh, A minor scale shape here, just like Kirk Hammett did in this song, and using the A minor scale shape here, 
on the fifth string, okay? And I want you to hear how easy it is to, you know, what, what it sounds like when you just directly try to rip somebody off. And that's what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to write a Ride the Lightning era style riff with a Ride the Lightning era style guitar solo by using the same elements that I saw in this solo, which was two scale shapes, some arpeggios, um, some hammer-ons and pull-offs, and a few 16th note passages. So um, thanks again for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this little solo to play things out.